there's a 4-6 scale blowing off the Irish Sea. And Blackpool Pleasure Beach is taking the brunt. It's a particularly ill wind for the big one, the world's tallest and fastest roller coaster. Park manager Jim Rowland is on his way over to get things moving. There's really a major problem with the wind, only from when it's from the west. And uh, it's today directly west. So somebody has to make a decision whether we run this damn thing or not. And I'm afraid uh, on days like this, it's down to me. At the park office, staff are still clocking in. Come on in, John. Your torch is on your table. Operations manager Lynn Satchel has to make sure that all the rides are fully staffed before opening time. I am getting a bit worried now. It's now quarter past ten. They're supposed to be on the rides for half past. And I've got 92% of my staff still not here. I've had seven 50th birthdays for mothers. We've had eight deaths of grannies. Uh, last year, actually going back to last year, one, one lad buried his granddad, the same granddad, twice. He forgot he'd done it early on in the season. <laughs> in the control booth, they're keeping a close eye on the wind direction and speed. It's a westerly and the needle is hovering just below 50 miles per hour, the critical point. For the test run, they load the carriages with sandbags instead of people. What wind speed have you got? 45. Well, send the damn thing then. Let's get the bloody thing going. We are doing. When it gets to the top, give it me again, or just before it goes over the top, just in case you've got to stop it. Copy. Once the train goes over the top, gravity alone will carry it back. A 50 mile an hour headwind will slow it down and could even stop it getting home. 45. 47. I'll be filling my trousers around about 48. Bouncing. Bouncing to where? 50. Oh, you nearly gave me a coronary then. Come on, you big Mary. What's up? It's just not me. The wind did slow it down, and the train didn't make it up the last rise. Get up there, get it pushed out, and let's get the damn thing open. There it goes. No, it isn't. Keep pushing. Yeah, we will. We stopped. We shouldn't have stopped. I view it as the most complicated piece of equipment we've got in the place. And it has to be treated with that respect. And sometimes it beats me and I don't like it. But it ain't going to do it today. Because I've made up my mind. The fun center of the universe. With the big one down, it's important that every other ride opens on time. Lynn's out chasing latecomers. Right, well, we've got a busy day on the park today. I've got a charge on Paul Smedley. Not turned in yet, so I'm going to the Argosy. It's a hotel on the corner here that puts up staff. We have a certain amount of people that are late every day. The Paul Smedley's one of them. We're having a problem. We need the cars going. We've got to get him in. All right, this is Mr Smedley's room. Mr. Smedley, you're late for work, dear. Oh, wow. Uh, you're home? <laughs> That's a no no, that is nothing on his bottom half, and he's just popped out for the world to see. So I've shut it. I've shut the door. I can't be that rotten to him. I'm sorry. Come on, Paul, we need you, dear. Thank you. I know everything he has to know about you now. Cues for the big one are lengthening. JR's decided to let it run. Yeah, I'll get the bags out. Come on, don't stand there looking at it. Let's get them back. Out the way. Move right down, please. Two there. If the train gets stuck while it's carrying passengers, JR will be faced with an emergency rescue.
Pleasure Beach's Horseshoe Theatre, Richard Devere has arrived for last-minute rehearsals of his magic horror show, Mystique. Normally, the show co-stars Richard's performing dog, Schnorbitz. But as a result of her successful date at the stud kennels, Schnorbitz is expecting puppies any day now. Oh, it's a struggle now. You're right, Scott. Richard's having problems with his most dangerous illusion, the buzzsaw trick. A two and a half foot circular saw blade spinning at a thousand revs a minute will appear to slice Mark, his assistant, in half. All right, here we go then. Uh, have we sorted out the dead man's handle? Sorry? Dead man's handle. He has to push down on that all the time. And if we hit him or anything, obviously, let's go. It's a safety. All okay. right. Justine, come here, darling. No, no, you, you've tied him up. Yeah. Just make sure just that, make sure oh, that Mark has yeah. got that in his hand. Yeah. Before I tie him up. Yeah, yeah, as soon as possible. All right, yeah. yeah. Stand by, please. To protect himself if things go wrong, Mark has to grip a dead man's handle. If he lets go, the saw should stop immediately. But it's been playing up. It's too high now. Just as the blade got to the danger zone, the dead man's handle kicked in of its own accord. Right. Okay. Do the last bit and then we'll just carry on. <laughs> JR's also got problems. At this time of year, the workers like to have some fun at the management's expense. The annual thing that usually hits me this time of the year is masses and masses of soap suds put in the river caves. I've been trying for seven years to stop it. Um, and I have a secret weapon in my locker which nobody knows about. And I'm just going up now to see whether I need to use it or not. His secret weapon is a liquid defoamer. It should get rid of the damaging foam which builds up when the staff pour detergent into the water rides. Ah! Lovely. At long last, I've won. Keith, I love it. I've won after seven years. It's starting. You might be a bit premature. I've that this morning. They've put, somebody's tried it, but they haven't been able to get hold of enough. We put the anti-soap in. Not yet, I've got it stuck around the corner. We haven't issued any soap from stores for four months. That's helped a bit, I think. Yeah, I'm really pleased with myself now. My motivation is there for the day. The day's still young, the day's still young. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah, tell you what, God help you. I remember who said that. At Richard de Vere's country house, they're worried. Schnorbitz has retired to her own chalet. She's overdue and could go into labour any minute. We can pretty much take it that she's not going to be in tonight. So uh, everybody's just pacing about up and down at the minute waiting for something to happen. The vet has predicted as many as eight puppies, so the delivery could be taxing. I just don't know what's going to happen because I've never been in sort of this position before. You know, what happens if something goes wrong? And is she going to be all right? Because, I mean, that's the most important, it's the most important thing. You hear horror stories and, you know, puppies getting stuck and whatever. Just a bit worried about her, that's all. Three million things going through my mind. And show business isn't one of them at the minute. The soap bandits have struck. The park's waterways are solid with suds. We've been had. We've been got at again. 
Sammy. Where's that Box City Falmer that was there this morning? Prime suspect is Dominic, the foreman in charge of the River Caves. Not guilty. Not me. Don't get me hands dirty. Who did it? Well, I can't tell yet. No line. Don't know. Could be somebody. If I find out who it is, heads will roll over it, letting it out. One go. I'm in the river caves, Keith. I'm waiting for some more defomer. Because somebody's nicked that lot. You found it. Peter, don't bring it. Pour it straight in. I'll win this one. Because I've got this quick. As you can see, it's breaking up now. I lost the battle, but I'll win the war. Every year I've had something different to counteract it. This is the best one. This is nearly instant. I don't think you need to put any more in here. Dominic! Forty-five minutes before curtain up for Richard Devere's show. The vet has been called to the dressing room to attend to Schnorbitz. There's still no sign of puppies. I'm just getting just a little bit worried. What we'll do, we'll give her an injection again, see if we can get things yeah. moving, everything's ready to, to work. So we'll see if we can give it a kick start. OK. Yeah. There we go. What a good girl. Oh, she's happy. Oh, well done. Nothing to it. Nothing. That's it. Uh, so, famous. Yeah. We'll just leave her quietly, yeah? Yeah. I've got some towels with me as well, right. just in case. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Right. Well, we don't expect anything too dramatic for a while, yeah? Right. Okay. All right, well, thanks a lot. Yeah. OK. Well, next is a waiting game. Give it about half an hour, three quarters of an hour, and see if this injection will produce any contractions. Um, and then we take it from there. <laughs> High speed Takado Express has stopped halfway round. Lynn's arrived to supervise the rescue. They're only 20 feet off the floor, but it's too high for some. Okay, it's okay. All right. Of course you are. Come on, big boy. Your sister, your sister. You're supposed to be protecting her, not her, you. You're the big man on here. Of course you are. Come on, you're okay. 30 centre base. Andy, it's quite important. We need some ambassadors ASAP down to the Takedo. Coming. Just struggled on the top and it wouldn't go, you know, smoke was coming up. I'm just glad they got us down. I thought, like, you know. It doesn't look that high, does it? But when you sat up there, it nearly. Well, this. <laughs> One passenger seems in real trouble. She's hyperventilating. I'll get the medic down. 37 to base. I think we may need the medic down. There's a woman asthmatic and she's beginning to have a bit of a panic attack. Ten minutes to showtime. But Richard has only one thing on his mind. And now, even the vet is starting to worry. What's, uh, what's happening is the wound just isn't contracting. It's not responding to the injections that we're giving. So it looks likely that we're going to have to do a cesarean. Okay. Oh, She'll be all right, will she? Yeah. I mean, is it a simple thing? Well, I'm a little worried. I would have liked to have seen her contracting with the injections that we've been using. Right. So, you know, she's a big dog. Mm. I thought she's getting a bit tired as well now. She's, well, that's what I'm worried about. Mm. She's just exhausted. She's, she's had enough, really. Yeah. I'd like to be there, obviously, but if it needs doing, you know, you know, then my arm's carrying on with the show and uh, let's her go, I suppose. Okay. All right, Bob, I'll speak okay. to you, speak to you soon. The woman stuck on the Takado Express is terrified of ladders. Even her partner is having trouble coaxing her down. The company compensates disappointed customers. Have you got any tickets on you? Not no, we'll give any. 
I mean, we're looking at quite a few each here, aren't we? Maybe I'll fire. How much are we looking at each? Quite a few. How many is involved there? At least 16 people. Are they all together or are they all separate? No, they're all separate. Two, yeah. Guest relations, we're just going to take this group up now to King Cotton, get them a drink and sort them out with any payout, any statement they want to make. Oh. Just calm them down, basically. Although she's back on solid ground, the shock has taken its toll. Sandy, the park's medic, is now on the case. Sandy, it's a very, very distraught lady there, a very angry man. They won't bring him to King Cotton. I'll leave the guy with you in case he gets stroppy and I'll take her with me. So what you can do, in that position, right, it's a nice, easy breath. Okay? You've been nice, you're calming them. Every one of them was fighting the bloody heights. I couldn't believe it. So am I. The battle of the bubbles continues. JR's gone home, but the pranksters have been at it again. Did you do it? I'm not, no, I'm not saying. I've got me... I've, they're all over, helpers. It's all different rides, isn't it? I don't know. There's so many entries in there, you don't know where they're coming from. Just pour it all in. JR's number two, Keith Allen, has to face the foam. The foam affects the sensors which control the boats. Is one of them broken? Yeah, we're in business again. This is getting beyond a joke now. Causing problems with the ride, that's not funny anymore. And the people that have done it have probably gone home or they're sitting in a pub somewhere laughing. Hi, to base. Just to let you know, I'm shutting the river caves and running them off while I get rid of these soap suds. And while all radios are listening, I'll keep the park open until the soap suds are gone. So if they want to keep putting soap powder in and stay here all night, that's fine by me. <laughs> Schnorbitz has been anaesthetised for her caesarean. from the Tocado has been transferred to the park's King Cotton pub. My first thought was, is it just going to explode into flames? Poor Jess thought she was going to die. And they decided to get a ladder. I lost the sun through falling off of a ladder. So they petrify me. Do you want to make any possible comments? I want to make yeah. a complaint. Yeah. I came up here for a break to help me with my nerves. Yeah. I can understand And this has set me back years. It's time to put the erratic dead man's handle to the test. Twenty minutes into the caesarean, the first pup is delivered. As soon as the pups are born, they need vigorous rubbing to push out the fluid from their lungs and get them breathing. The 
The defoma has worked and it's clear water at the river cave's ride. That's the last of the defoma. If anybody puts any more soap in now, we've had it. I don't know who's putting it in. But whoever it is has been at it all day, haven't they? There must be somebody that came this morning and is still here now. Could I like him? You. Who is it? I don't know, please. They well, must have put gallons and gallons and gallons in today. They've got to them, haven't they? Yeah. Because, I mean, we've put a lot of anti-foaming. That's got to be the last lot now, hasn't it? What? The last lot going in or the last lot of anti-foam? Anti-foam. Well, we've got tons more anti-foam. It's just like a war, isn't it, really? It's, it's a war that nobody's going to win. It's a draw, then, isn't it? It's a draw. We're going to call it a draw, then? Yeah. Okay, yeah, then. Yeah, it's a draw. draw. Seven puppies have now been born, but number eight is in trouble. It's got fluid in its lungs and shows no sign of life. At last, number eight has responded to treatment. Now, Richard can take over. The pups have been coming thick and fast. Now there are 15, and they're all doing well. How many have you got? 15. There's nothing more magic than this, is there, really? You don't know. Take a bit of time. Hey, this will take a bit of topping. I'll do this in the show every night. <laughs> <laughs> Schnorbitz is exhausted, but she makes a full recovery. The Battle of the River Caves is over and the soap bandits have won. With no defoma left, it's going to be a long night for Keith.